It's time to Talk Pittsburgh with Heather Abraham. Coming up today on Talk Pittsburgh, an accident changed the lives of a former KDK reporter and her daughter. The road to recovery has been challenging. How they relied on faith and community to keep moving forward. A family suffered an unimaginable loss, their son passing away at just 12 weeks old. But their experience inspired them to help others. Their latest plans to turn a piece of property into a safe haven for grieving parents. Stress and anxiety often goes hand in hand with projects. How to tackle transforming a space without an ending with tears and a mess to clean up. A lot to get to. Good afternoon and welcome to Talk Pittsburgh. And we are so happy to have Mary Hours joining us to kick off the show. So nice to have you here. No, I'm so excited to be sitting next to you. This is so fun and it's so different for me, but I'm ready to talk about things and just have a little fun. Yeah, and we were just talking about how the allergies have been crushing me if you're dealing with this at home. You know, it's just been... A whirlwind. I know your this eyes week. look better than yesterday. They were really red. My husband's dealing with all of this at home right now, and I'm like, "Are you sick? Like, are you sick?" And he's like, "No, it's just my allergies." I'm like, "Allergies? Well, you have to beg up men to take medicine." So I'm like, "Please just take allergy medicine." <laughs> yeah, I totally understand. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. In your house, you guys watch a lot of cartoons. Yeah ours too and if you're a parent or caregiver you know about bluey we love this show our kids wake up they want to watch it every morning and in fact my daughter lila asked for the specific episode the other day she wanted to watch this episode called exercise okay. so apparently it's in the spotlight right now the show because it showed both the dad and the mom weighing themselves and some people are saying there may have been some fat shaming that's happening that. Yeah, they, they pinch their fat and it was a little bit like we don't watch Bluey, but I saw all of this blowing up on TikTok yeah, yeah. and people talking about it. So then I'm thinking if my daughter saw that, what would I say to her? So I don't think it's more like I get there's definitely two sides to it, but I think it's more of how your body should feel, not how it looks. Yeah. So I totally get why, you know, they stepped on the scale and it was like a oh, and pinch their fat. Yeah, and the dad said, you know, I, I need to get out and do some more exercise. Yep. But they did this in front of the kids. So the Australian Broadcasting Company put out a statement saying in part, the new version, because it was edited, mm -hmm. provides families with the opportunity to manage important conversations in their own way. Yep. But yeah, a lot of people are weighing in on both sides of this because... It's a normal conversation in households. It's a normal this conversation. Happens. You know, I, I know that there's a lot of uh, talk about body positivity. We should love our bodies yep. for what they are and what they allow us to do. Yep. I also know as a woman who's had three kids, yeah. my body has changed significantly yep. from my 20s to where I am now. Yes. And sometimes that comes with like some tough conversations yeah. for ourselves, right? The other thing that kind of bothered me too about the episode, and you know, I think it's, it's not too big of a deal, but they also blame the kids yeah. for them not having time to exercise. So I think it's like, that's not a conversation. That's not a burden you should be putting on your kids. Like, yeah. I don't work out. I don't. And I just, it's not my kid's fault. It's just, I don't feel like it sometimes. Yeah. But if I do feel like I want to work out and I want to get up and move, like I like dancing, then I'm going to do that. But it's not my kid's fault that I don't work out. This, this is like a much larger conversation about finding time mm -hmm. for self-care and like not having the guilt that we have as parents to set that time aside for ourselves. So we'll yeah. save that for a rainy day. Talking <laughs> about bodies, summer is coming up, I know. beach trips, and we're finalizing our beach trip details. I know. So we are going back to Myrtle Beach. I have some pictures Ugh. to share. We went last year and this was our first family trip to the beach. Just the five of us. I love it. And it was it was amazing. Uh, we had such a good time. It was we created a lot of memories and so we want to go back again this year. Why does that picture look so perfect though? How did you get everyone to stand still yeah. and pose? <laughs> you know how it goes. I know it's a you disaster. Know how it goes. Oh, that's no. so cute. Um, and, and I know you went to the beach last year. You guys did like a quick yeah. little weekend away. Yeah, we did, and then we all got sick when we came back, which of course. was fantastic. But we went to North Carolina. The drive down was really hectic, but it was Wally's first time at the beach. Aww. And he just, I mean, literally this kid was just running to the water so I'm like running after him Viviana was kind of like <laughs> I'm not really wanting the beach I just want to hang out with the seashells kind of pick them bring yeah. some home to the family so it was a little bit different having uh, to chase after a one-year-old we had a great conversation actually with a parenting expert about how that it can be really overwhelming yeah. for kids like sensory overload if they've never been to the beach before just like the sounds the sights everything soaking all that in but you had this really great idea. We should talk about tips and hacks mm -hmm. if you're going to the beach this summer. So this comes to us from OneCrazyHouse.com. 
Yeah, you got to create a sand free zone with a fitted sheet. Have you done this one? I have not, but I've actually, um, this isn't on the list, but I've created a mesh bag, like taking a mesh backpack for her to collect seashells in, and then it already takes the sand out. So when you they can bring just them shake back, it. Yeah, there's no sand on so there. So smart. Um, another one is to bring an inflatable kiddie pool. We tried this last year, and it was a total fail oh, gosh. because we didn't bring a pump. Oh. So here we are at the beach trying to inflate this thing. Yep. Yep. And then you have to either deflate it or bring it home. Yeah, so that was a it, fail yeah, for us. Yeah, and if it's small enough, when you're blowing it up, it might be blowing around depending how windy it is at the beach because yeah. it gets pretty windy. Yeah. But cornstarch also to get the sand off. Have you tried this? I have. I have it. It totally works. Totally I works. I just dump it. I just dump it on them and start rubbing it off. It will, it, works. it will absolutely help. And then I thought this was really interesting too. You can use uh, a coffee mug, like if you have one of those to-go coffee mugs, mm -hmm. to put your phone, your keys, your money in, because people are going to think there's Or a coffee. Ziploc baggy. Yep. Or a Ziploc bag, that works. Have you heard of people using diapers? And no. Laughing? Yes. So I, I, I have I not tried this. at home. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you put your phone in the diaper, and then you wrap it up like it's an old diaper. Stop. No one is going in that thing. They're oh not my, even going to attempt. Would know. Yes. Oh, that's a surprise one. I like that. Okay. We're going to North Carolina too, so I'm taking all these in. And then here's another one, set a timer for sunscreen. We know how important it is, and at the beach we can oftentimes get carried away, so yes. if you set that timer, no one will go home with the sunburn. Oh, wait, and I also have um, a brush that I put powder sunscreen on my daughter's face. So, so you don't have to rub with the sand. And it is awesome. And it brushes the sand off her face, too. Good idea. Mm. All right, some people might be going to Disney for a family vacation or maybe another an amusement park. And mm. we know how disappointing it can be when you go somewhere like that. You have young kids. Maybe they aren't tall enough to ride the rides, especially when you pay those really high prices for tickets. Well, one family is coming under fire. They actually took down their video on TikTok after trying to make their kid taller by gluing layers onto his shoes to make them platform shoes. Yeah. So the family took the video down. According to parents.com, they said that with their influence comes responsibility, and they would never want anyone to get hurt using their hack. I what do you know. think about this? I've never been to Disney, but obviously this is trending on TikTok. I saw this on <clears> TikTok, <throat> so I'm like, if I would ever plan a Disney trip, I'm going to TikTok for my tips. I'm not taking that tip though, um, because height restrictions are there for a reason. They're there for a reason. They have charts, actually, that I saw that tells you the height restriction and requirements that you need to ride whatever ride. So you can plan your trip literally to those, which would make sense. I just don't, I mean, when, when we hear about some people getting hurt on amusement park rides, There's like anxiety. <laughs> well, and that's the thing, like I want my kids to be as safe as possible. See? And if they have a, a height restriction, it's, mm -hmm. I'm assuming they're for a reason. Yes. But there I, were, I mean, this, it goes beyond this. Like people were weighing in and, and a lot of people were angry about oh, yeah. them doing this. They were like, but, what are you doing? Yeah. But there were also people that were weighing in with their own hacks and uh, things that they have hats. done. Like, yeah. why are you stuffing a hat? And and putting princess shoes on the kids. Like, that is so uncomfortable to walk around in the park in, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I hate roller coasters. I'm not a big fan <laughs> of them. And my daughter, she did when she liked them when she was younger. Now she's five. She doesn't really like, um, you know, like riding them. But if she doesn't want to, I'm not going to force her. Right. And if she's not the height, I'm like, all right, on to the next girl. Let's go. Gosh. Have you taken them to Kennywood yet? Um, like, you when can she was some, one, yeah. but I'm going to do that this year. We're going to go to Kitty Land. I mean, and that's the thing. Yeah. There's like a mini steel phantom. So even oh. if, you're, if you don't like roller coasters, I think you'll be that's okay That's perfect there. for me. I will ride it with her. All right. <laughs> Still to come on Talk Pittsburgh, we sit down with the hosts of The Unqualified Therapist to learn how they became mental health advocates and what they're hoping to achieve through their podcast. Plus, a former KDKA reporter and her daughter discuss her road to recovery after a severe injury left her in a wheelchair. 